In today's video, I'm going to talk about some common but secret mistakes you make in interviews. I will use real interview questions and answers. See if you can spot the problems. How do I know these problems? Well, I'm a solutions architect with lots of experience and I have done hundreds of cloud interviews. When you go into an interview room, you will face me or someone like me and not a pen and paper instructor. All right, let's jump in. So let's say I ask you, hey Tom, can you tell me how you scale your applications running on EC2? Tom says, sure, I will horizontally scale those EC2s, I'll create an auto scaling group, I'll also create an application load balancer pointing to that auto scaling group. So when the EC2s are scaling up or down, the application load balancer will discover the EC2s and automatically distribute traffic. Is this answer good? Let me know in the comments before you watch the next part. Well, it's an average answer. Why? Because EC2, an auto scaling group with an application load balancer has been out for many years now. All other candidates will give the same answer. Heck, at this point, my wife and even my grandmother know about auto scaling groups and load balancers. Now let's say Ravi walks through the door and I ask him the same question and he goes, I will use an auto scaling group to horizontally scale the EC2s based on appropriate metrics and I will use an application load balancer to distribute traffic across those EC2s. However, these are out of the box setups and based on the nature of the application traffic, they require additional customization. For example, if your application expects heavy bursty traffic for a big release, I can pre-warm the load balancer and use scheduled scheduling with the auto scaling group where a bunch of EC2s will already be up and running, ready to handle heavy traffic for the big day. I will make sure the EC2 images are lightweight so they can scale faster. Also, most applications use a database. I will also have to make sure when your application is scaling up or down, the database can also handle this burst of traffic. I will utilize features like read replica for heavy read traffic, introduce a caching layer or RDS proxy to reduce the burden on the database. See the difference? The difference is you do not just answer, you have to delight the interviewer because cloud jobs are competitive, especially solutions architect roles. The trick is you have to mix in real world challenges and solutions in your answers. A real world architect knows that just doing regular vanilla solutions is not enough. So when someone gives an answer like the second candidate, it shows they have thought through the challenges and knows how to solve them. When you prepare for your interviews, you can get the questions in Google or Glassdoor, etc. Then think about how you can customize the answers that the average candidate will not mention. If you want to know more tips and tricks like this that comes in the cloud interview, along with the study tips, sign up for my free weekly newsletter. As a welcome gift, you get to download this beautiful PDF with many different cloud question answer with the study notes. Sign up for free at cloudwithraj.com newsletter. I'll give the link in the description. Now back to the video. Second mistake I see happening a lot. And again, let's try to understand this with an actual question and answer. Let's say I ask, hey Tom, you designed an application. How do you know it's good? Or how do you even approach creating this design? So Tom says, I will sit with the team, go through the requirements, and then based on the requirements, work backward and select appropriate AWS services and then I'll create the design. I will load test the design and then I'll also make sure the services are approved by the company. And I'll put the design and implementation tasks in Jira or on a Kanban board to track and execute the project. That's how I will ensure the design is good. This answer sounds good, but it is not. Because anyone can say those things. There are some basic expectations when it comes to solutions architect interviews. This question is related to one of those fundamental concepts. So why do we not ask those concepts directly? More often, 
The interviewer will ask the question in a different way to see if you can connect the concepts. Because that's how real world projects are. Confusing and ambiguous. That's why solutions architects make big money. If all the requirements are known and all the tasks are clear, there is no need for an architect. Anyone can Google and create a design. So whenever you hear about whether the design is good, how do you evaluate the design, etc. Think of the well-architected framework, which is the basic and fundamental expectation for essays to know. So to answer in the same question, how do you go about designing an application or how do you know your design is good? A good candidate answers, I will utilize the AWS well-architected framework for this. I will sit down with the application leads and prioritize the pillars. And working backwards from that, I will design the application. I will also execute a well-architected review to ensure the design is up to the mark and if anything is missing, we will fix that. And then you can go elaborate on the pillars a little bit more. So let me ask you this. Do you remember how many pillars are in the well-architected framework and what are they? Let me know in the comments. Let's see if you remember. No cheating. Okay, similar to this well-architected framework, you also need to know a couple of other things. But let me tell you the question and then see if you can figure it out. So let's say the interviewer asks you, hey, you are running an application and something breaks or the security is compromised. How do you go about solving it? So you may answer like, Okay, so I will use security services like KMS, IAM, GuardDuty, CloudWatch, etc. and figure out where the problem is and then I'll go about solving it. And then you will go and explain a little bit on the services. Yeah, it's an average answer. A lot of folks will say the same. But instead, a great answer will be, well, AWS follows a shared responsibility model. You have two major parts. One is security of the cloud that AWS is responsible for. The next is security in the cloud which the customer is responsible for. So depending on the service you are using, troubleshooting will vary. For example, you are running your application on Lambda. For Lambda, AWS is responsible for security and managing the underlying infrastructure. If there is a security vulnerability in the underlying infrastructure, it is AWS's responsibility to fix it. But if the security vulnerability is in the application, then it's on the application team, and then you can go ahead and tell the name of the security services and measures for the application part running on Lambda. So shared responsibility is another fundamental expectation. Make sure you study that. Some other critical areas are cost optimization, networking, compute, security, and migration. Remember, 85% of workloads are still on premises. So I see a lot of times people know compute very well. But you also need to understand the other areas as well as migration. If you are confused where to start and what to study, feel free to check out my AWS for Beginners course, maximum discounted link in the description. Moving on, another challenge I see is well, let me see if you can figure it out with an example. Let's say I ask someone, hey, how did you migrate your data center to AWS? And the candidate goes, I will use AWS migration tools uh, like application discovery service, uh, MGN or application migration service, and uh, DMS, uh, database uh, migration service. Now let's say another candidate says, Sure, I will migrate utilizing AWS services, for example, ADS or application discovery service. ADS discovers all the running servers, including databases. Then I will use MGN or application migration service to migrate those servers from the data center to AWS. And I will use DMS or database migration service to either lift or shift those databases or even replatform them, etc. See the difference? Even though the answer is the same, you have to give the answer in a confident, communicative way. I have interviewed people who have done hundreds of server migration, some of them even thousands of servers. As the interviewer, our hands are tied. 
So let's say the person comes in who has done a lot of migrations, but the answers are not confident. The communication is not great. And another person comes in who has done, let's say, 10 migrations, and the answers are confident and coherent and will have like good bullet points. One of the big qualities of a solutions architect is convincing the team, including executives. So when all the interviewers go back, we all have to justify our choice of selecting the candidate. Most of us, if not all of us, will pick the second candidate, who may not have migrated that many servers, yet is able to convey the design and the solution in a better and more effective way, given the quality of answers are comparable. Being good is not enough. You have to demonstrate you are good. So the important takeaway is, it does not matter how many hands-on experiences you have. You need to practice the answers so it comes out smoothly in interviews. You are not going to get every question that you know in an interview. But this is just like soccer or cricket or baseball. When you get a good ball that you can score on, you have to swing it hard so that the questions you are preparing that you know that you have worked on, you have to make sure you knock them out of the park. Practice them so the interview is not the first time you are saying the answer. If you found this video helpful, watch this other video that YouTube thinks will be helpful for your cloud journey.